for. So here's step two to this uh, particular red flag. Oftentimes, these jobs will say that they're looking for motivated individuals, especially those who are competitive, and maybe they played sports in college. I guarantee you, you can find job descriptions that have those three terms, motivated individuals, competitive, and you played sports in college, in them right now on any major job board. You don't have to be hyper-competitive in marketing jobs, though. That's a sales job thing. Some of these job descriptions read like a college bro who has had about three too many monster energy drinks. It's meant to appeal to those who think they can hustle because they have a competitive spirit. Marketing, while it can be competitive in a sense, doesn't have the same achievement drive mechanisms as sales. In a nutshell, this red flag is easily seen by the over-exuberance of the job description talking about achievement and teams. That's what you say to a sales team, not to a marketing team. Another thing to look for with jobs like this are the words retail setting. This is a dead giveaway that the job you're looking at for marketing isn't going to be doing that. So remember that job interview I mentioned earlier that I went to to kind of test my gut and make sure it was right? Well, during the interview, I got real straight with the guy interviewing me, and I asked him who that Fortune 500 client was. Now, he mentioned it was DirecTV. To his credit, he was honest with me, and they had been recently acquired by AT&T, which, again, makes them a Fortune 500 client. Okay. But this brought the next questions from me, which was, in a retail setting... The only thing I've seen with DirecTV is the guys who are asking folks at Home Depot to sign up for the service. Is this that job? Now, to his credit, he sheepishly said yes. At that point, I told him we were finished because this was not a marketing position. This was a sales position. And a retail setting acts as an underscore to this type of flag. If your job posting says retail setting... You're going to be selling someone something to someone inside of a store, flat out. Now, this next one, this next kind of scam job or something that kind of falls into this category is a weird one. And this is because it's a result of something that should really be a good thing that benefits job seekers. It's It's been twisted, if you will. And this is a thing that is... Useful, especially for those people who may be discriminated against or marginalized because of poor prior life choices. This is about fair chance hiring. So what is fair chance hiring? And this is also known as ban the box hiring. This is a hiring method which is often actually codified into law in many states, uh, 33 of them last I looked, that ensures that companies look at the person applying for a job and the qualifications they bring before running a criminal background check that would discount them immediately. Now, on paper, that's an awesome thing. People make mistakes, and second chances are what good business ownership is all about. I myself have benefited from someone looking at who I was rather than a mistake I made years ago in my job search. I'm a big fan of this when it's used properly. So am I saying the process is flawed? No, no, not at all. It's simply been co-opted by these types of false advertising scam or other undesirable and unfair job providers to take advantage of these types of people. So looking at job descriptions nowadays, you'll often find the following little blurb down at the bottom of the description. It usually says, this job is a job for mil which military experienced candidates are encouraged to apply. Open to applicants who do not have a high school diploma or GED. A fair chance job. You or the employer follow fair chance hiring practices when performing background checks. Or a good fit for applicants with gaps in their resume or who have been out of the workforce for the past six months or more. A good job for someone who's just entering the workforce or returning to the workforce with limited experience in education. Open to applicants who do not have a college diploma. So while on some jobs, this is a very accurate, true, and helpful section, the companies, which are often the kind of type 2 companies that we mentioned previously, the people who falsely advertise on their, uh, their sales and marketing positions, if you will, 
These folks have put this on their application to appeal to those people who might have limited job prospects either due to criminal conviction or who are truly down on their luck or inexperienced. This is downright predatory. So if you see a job that has this big disclaimer at the end, again, it's not a 100% disqualifier, but just be aware that sometimes this can be used as a lure to bring folks in who might be vulnerable to certain types of jobs. And again, if this appears on something that is not tripping any of the other flags that we've talked about in this episode, it's probably legit. It's probably being used for the reason it should be. But if you're looking at this and it's on a marketing job that's actually a sales job, it's most likely being used against you. As we close down here, one final thought on jobs that are not the greatest, if you will, or the ones that just aren't, don't have your best interests at heart. Always take a look at the salary requirements. Uh, there's a couple examples of this that I want to give, one of them being uh, gig economy jobs, particularly child care. If you are uh, in the child care realm, you know that it is a tremendously underappreciated a uh, set of skills, you know, the domestic engineer, whether, you know, they're male or female uh, nowadays is somebody who is overworked and underpaid. And uh, unfortunately, when you have uh, people wanting childcare, they often uh, really shortchange that, you know, for a babysitter or a nanny during the day. Uh, I read a couple descriptions here as I was uh, preparing this episode. I found a family in Chicago who wanted a full-time nanny for a 6 and a 12-year-old for $250 a week, and that comes out to about 6 bucks an hour to take care of two kids, which is absolutely ridiculous, uh, especially when you placed it against the $30 an hour that another family was offering in the same metro area. Now, I, again, I understand that uh, there are good neighborhoods and bad neighborhoods, but it is Chicago, Illinois. It's a high standard of living city. You don't live in Chicago without making at least somewhat reasonable uh, money, especially because both of these jobs were located in a affluent Chicago suburb. So be sure to watch out for jobs like that, jobs that underpay you for what you're worth, especially when it comes to something uh, like a gig economy or, uh, you know, I've seen a couple of these postings, you know, need nanny for five children, 15 bucks an hour. Like, no, just no, uh, know your worth. And that's really important when it comes to uh, doing things like childcare or any job for that matter, salary research is really important for you. Now, the other part of that that ties into salary is I have a, a job description here that there's a uh, St. Louis, Missouri distribution company that's hiring a distributor rep in the state of Wisconsin. And as I look into all of their credentials, things look all right. You know, they offer some commission, they offer uh, some benefits and things like that. But the pay scale, I'm looking at this. It says job type, full-time, contract, commission, pay $25,000 to $300,000 per year. That's quite a range. So you have to ask yourself, when you come across a job like this, is this going to be a job for you? You might be spellbound, as I was years ago, by those six-figure jobs. Man, it would be awesome to make hundred grand a year. Much less, you know... Oh my gosh, 300, triple 100 grand a year? Heck yeah, sign me up. Don't jump at it so fast though. There's a reason that $25,000 is on there because I have a feeling and many companies will, uh, if you press them, admit what their average rep takes home. It's entirely possible that the $25,000 is the base salary that you would be entitled to take home pre-commissions. And you might be a great salesperson. You might be somebody who makes the most incredible route of uh, customers for your distributor. But the reality is, is that you're probably somewhere under that $300,000 a year mark. And most likely very much closer to that $25,000 a year mark. And I'm not saying that because I think you suck or because I think you're bad at your job or anything like that. But that $300,000 on there is because there's one dude at this company who is making that. And they can put that on there because that's true. This position is indeed paying $300,000 a year. 
but he's the only one that's making that. And whether that's through his skill as a salesperson, either because he's naturally gifted, hardworking, or he lucked into the biggest account in Nebraska, that 300000 is likely not achievable for you when it's presented in a range of 25000 to $300,000 a year. So again, this stresses the point to know what you are worth. Know what your jobs are supposed to be worth. Get that ballpark, get on Glassdoor, and find out what a sales rep for a mechanical company or whatever this, this guy uh, is selling is supposed to make. You'll probably find a tighter range than $275,000 either way. And again, if you really think about it, the difference between living a $25,000 a year lifestyle and a $300,000 a year lifestyle is astronomical. It's unbelievable. I used to uh, kind of pal around with some of the executives at, uh, at one of my past companies. You know, they'd take me places and things like that. And I made decent money, but there was no way, absolutely no way I could hang with these guys when they went to Vegas and decided to put $3,000 on the craps table. The amount of money to, that you have as disposable income after about $70,000 is just astronomical. So if you're on that lower end and if you think, you know, hey, even if you're doing better than the lowest guy, that's still only fifty grand a year on this job. And that's a great wage. Like that's not a wage I'd necessarily turn down for myself at this time. I'm worth a little bit more than that. But you have to think, are you worth $300,000 a year, number one? And is it possible for you to be worth $300,000 a year for this company that you're working for? And in some cases, that might be yes. Maybe you sell yachts. Absolutely, you can make three hundred grand a year if you sell yachts. But for most of us, we don't sell yachts. We sell dairy equipment or we sell uh, fueling contracts or things like that. And we don't get $5,000 in commission per sale or whatever it might be. So again, make sure that you're taking a look at what your job is supposed to pay, not what the job description says it can pay. All right, I'm done lecturing you about pay here. Uh, we'll, of course, uh, wrap up here with a couple closing thoughts and move on from there. So we've covered the five ways to spot scam jobs right now. Have all of these been 100% scams? No. And I'd be lying to you if I said that all of these types of jobs were pure 100% scams. We use the word scam in this episode to delineate the following. A, a job that is truly a scam, like an MLM. B, a job that falsely advertises itself or the work to be done. C, a job with which the employer is unequally benefiting from your hard work, generally by devaluing your time and labor. Now, in conclusion, there are a lot of bad jobs out there for various reasons. Today's job market can be an absolute hellscape. Hey, we snuck a show reference in there. And I'm hopeful that your job hunt can be made better easier, and more productive by knowing the five red flags we talked about so that you can find work that is indeed meaningful to you and helps you make ends meet. We've had some great success in our first 10 episodes of this show, and we actually beat the listenership goals I set for this, uh, this podcast by almost 20%. We're on to our next milestone, and I couldn't be happier to have you all along for the ride. Something that's going to get us there, though, is you, the community getting engaged. So if you see a post from Recruiting Hell that you like, please give it a share and tell more, more folks about the show. If you have questions, comments, feedback, or guest suggestions here for us at Recruiting Hell, you can drop us a line at Podcast at gmail.com, follow us on Instagram at recruiting underscore hell underscore podcast, Twitter at recruiting underscore hell, or on our Facebook fan page. As always, thanks to Purple Planet for our music and you, the listener, for tuning in. I'm Rob Conlon, and until we meet again, keep moving forward with your self-betterment and your job hunt. It's a marathon, not a sprint, and Recruiting Hell will be here to help you keep pace.